Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Zero Escape, 9 hours, 9 persons, 9 doors. In the last episode we don't remember, we went ahead and we learned that Ace was indeed the person who killed both Snake and, well not Snake, but Guy X and Clover. Uh, he also killed the ninth man indirectly by saying, hey, go through the door, ninth man went through the door, we know how that ended up. And, at the moment, he intends to probably also kill Lotus as well, because he took her with the pistol through the number 9 door, and now we're kind of panicking, because what do we do? We need 9 people to get through here. Or, not 9 people. We need, you know, a digital root of 9 to get through here. So we're kind of panicking right now. They retreated to the center of the room and began to talk. What do we do now? Yeah. What should we do? Well, the big door is still vacant, but the two of us can't do anything with it. Yeah. First of all, our digital root is not nine. Just then, as they were pondering what to do next, there was a noise. A noise like someone hitting a thick wooden panel. Junpei looked up, surprised. Seven followed suit his eyes jumping around the room looking for the source of the sound. It wasn't long before they found the altar. Or more precisely, what was on it. The coffin. Yeah! Let's open it! How? By force! I don't think that's gonna happen. Well, you never know till you try, right? The only necessity for success is the willingness to suffer a thousand failures. Who said that? I forget. Anyway, we gotta try. Junpei and Seven leapt at the coffin. They grabbed hold of what purchase they could find and pulled. Ugh! Ugh! Damn it! See, didn't I tell you? If you could just pull it open, why would it have something like that? Seven pointed at the keypad on the side of the coffin. Right, so unless I put it the right passcode, I'm not gonna open. It's not gonna open. The noise hadn't stopped. In fact, as it continued, it had only gotten louder and more forceful. What were they supposed to do, Junpei wondered. Was there some sort of clue somewhere? They stood there for a few moments, staring at the coffin, and then Seven spoke. Hey, Junpei! I remember you mumbling about some weird numbers over by the bathroom in the first class cabin. You got those numbers by solving the secret message Clover was holding, right? Truth had gone or something like that. Yeah, that's right. What about it? Well, maybe the number's the passcode for this thing, too. Come on, that's impossible. Those numbers were the code to unlock that safe. Yeah, but the person who set up that safe and this coffin are the same person, right? Zero set up both of these. Yeah, probably. Well, they might have even set the same passcode for both of them. That's ridiculous. Why don't you just try it? I mean, it's not like you'll make your things any worse. It'd just be a waste of time. There's no way they're the same number. How do you know that? You never know until you try. The only necessity for success is the willingness to suffer a thousand failures. Who said that? You. Ugh. Fine. He knelt down in front of the keypad and looked at it. Perhaps because he'd repeated them so many times before, the numbers came easily to Junpei's mind. 1438-3421 Quickly, he typed them in. 1438-3421 He checked that he'd entered the right numbers, took a deep breath, and pressed the E button. It only took a moment. Wh You've gotta be kidding me! There was a click. And with a heavy clunk, the lid of the coffin slid off onto the floor. Someone sat up from inside. Snake! You... why? Ah, those voices. Junpei and Seven, unless I'm mistaken. Where are the others? Are they elsewhere? Of course, there's no reason Snake would have known anything about where anyone else would be. Junpei and Seven looked at one another. There was a great deal he needed to know, but...
They had to tell him something, however, so they began to talk. Snake explained to them how he came to be locked in the coffin. Apparently, he'd been hit with some sort of knockout gas, and Junpei and Seven explained what had happened to the rest of them. And there was one thing, however, that neither Seven nor Junpei could bring themselves to say. That Ace had killed Clover. They feared that if Snake knew, he might well go insane. They decided as much by a look the moment Snake had climbed out of the coffin. Snake's story explained frustratingly little. Zero's true identity was a mystery, as were his intentions. Why had Zero put Guy X in Snake's clothes? If Zero had left a note for them to say the nunnery game had been played nine years before, was there some connection? Junpei put the question to Snake. His answer was less than illuminating. Um, what are you talking about? I apologize, but I have no idea what you're saying. It seemed as though Snake was, perhaps, not being entirely honest, but that knowledge did Junpei and Seven little good. No matter how many times they asked, he insisted that he knew nothing. It was becoming clear that Snake wouldn't give in, and every second they spent asking him was a second wasted. Their time limit was fast approaching. Snake's release from the coffin had changed nothing. He still needed to follow Ace as quickly as possible. However, they stood in silence, the overpowering atmosphere of the chapel almost stifling. Junpei, Seven, and Snake simply, simply stood, at a loss for words for what they should do next. What should we do now? He glanced over at Snake's wrist. Sure enough, he could see the two on the bracelet on Snake's wrist. The three of us can't make a digital root of nine. Yeah, we just get five. We're stuck here, then. Oh! Hey, I just remembered something! Seven began patting his pockets, as if he were checking to see if any of them held anything. What? What is it? I, uh, I found something earlier. What did you find? This! He finally found the pocket he wanted, and his hand dove into it. Seven pulled out something round and metal. A bracelet. There was no mistaking the number glowing at them from the face like a cartoon eye. Zero. Zero's bracelet? What the hell? Are you saying that Seven has the number Zero bracelet? Y yeah Where did you get that? So Nick's question was innocent enough, but... If he learned the truth, if he'd been able to see, he would have noticed Seven look away. Clover... gave it to me. She did? Yeah. How did she come by it? Well, she found it, see? On the other side of door one, Adek, in the captain's quarters. She asked me to hold on to it because it was too big and bulky for her to be lugging around. It was a lie and Junpei knew it. I haven't actually looked at it yet. Didn't want to dis disturb the crime scene, you know. Basic stuff. Well, I did borrow one thing. Alright, Junpei. Be nice knowing ya. What? What? Seven plus zero plus two is nine. Come on, man. I'm just kidding. Still, just in case, I want to make sure the zero bracelet gets picked up by the red. Snake, give me a hand here, all right? Without waiting for a response, he started walking toward the door. Junpei and Snake followed him quietly. Before long, they found themselves in front of the larger of the two doors. Seven and Snake put their palms on the red. Once they'd done that, Seven put the number zero bracelet on the scanner panel as well. A third asterisk appeared on the screen. Seven plus zero plus two is nine. Now they just needed to pull the lever and the door would be open. Huh? Why isn't it opening? Um, well, the third asterisk lit up, so... It must have registered the zero bracelet. Maybe it isn't actually zero. Huh? What? That bracelet may not actually produce the number zero when scanned. That is what I am saying. Why don't we try a few different combinations? Perhaps we can determine what number that bracelet actually contains. Junpei nodded. 
they decide to use the following combination. Junpei plus 7 plus the bracelet. Junpei plus 7 plus the mysterious bracelet. Junpei, Junpei plus 7 equals 5 plus 7 equals 12. 1 plus 2 equals 3. If that combination worked, then the mysterious bracelet's number was 6. They scanned in their bracelets. It opened! Yes, so it would seem. Seven clearly hadn't thought their experimentation would produce anything useful, and looked rather confused. Snake was, as usual, calm and smug. The door slid closed. Junpei's forehead furrowed as he thought. That meant the number for the mysterious bracelet was six. Five plus seven plus six equals eighteen, one plus eight equals nine. But how could it be six? The display on the bracelet clearly showed a zero. Suddenly, from somewhere far beneath them, they heard the creak and groan of tearing metal. With it came the sound of water pouring into parts of the ship that had, until recently, been dry. Oh man, that's not good. I guess our time's up, just about up, huh? At any rate, we know that the door can be opened. Let's go. But, Snake, are you sure? Yeah, you know that only Jubei and I can go through this way. You needn't worry. I have a solution to this problem. My last resort. But if now is not the time for last resorts, then when? Last... Resort? Junpei 7 and Snake ran, full tilt down a long straight hallway. They were headed for the stern of the ship and had no time for distractions. As they ran, Seven spoke. Gotta admit, you really surprised me there, kid. I couldn't figure out how the hell... How the hell you were gonna get out of that one? How come you didn't do that right off the bat? As I told you, it was the last resort. Had I used it at the beginning of the game, I would have come under a great deal of suspicion. I imagine most people would have taken it to mean that I was zero. Once they'd convinced themselves of that, I wasn't optimistic about my chances of making it out of here alive, let alone unscathed. I felt it best to play my cards close to my chest, as it were. That way, if I were in a situation where the there was nothing else I could do, I'd have a little trick up my sleeve. I'd just take, I'd just take my bracelet off. Snake's plan had been simple but effective. He'd simply removed his bracelet. How? To Junpei, it looked as though Snake had simply crushed the bones of his heart of his hand until they were small enough to fit through the wristband. Of course, that would have been practically impossible, so how had he done it? My brother's left arm is, um, it's not like a normal person's arm. It's fake. It's not a real arm. Snake had slid the bracelet off and tossed it into the coffin. With it gone, he had little to fear from the numbered doors. He'd walked through the door easily without authenticating. He stepped out of the other side unscathed and began run running down the hall alongside Seven and Junpei. They kept running for a while longer and eventually came upon a set of stairs leading downward on the right side of the hallway. They stopped and peered down the staircase. As far as they could tell, it went all the way to the bottom deck. There didn't seem to be any flooding. They nodded quickly to one another and jogged down the stairs. It took only a few minutes to make their way to the bottom deck. There was a single hallway in front of them, the end of which was a single door. Junpei threw it open. Inside was a massive iron gate. A plate was affixed to the top of it. It read incinerator. Incinerator? Oh my, that doesn't sound very pleasant. Do you see your lever near the gate, perhaps? Y yeah right over here. How did you, how did you know that? Well, I'd be happy to regale you with with the story. I imagine it should only take half a day or so. Ugh. Jinping grumbled, gave Snake a dirty look, and jogged over to the lever. If you pull it, the door ought to open. Got it. 
He pulled the lever down. With the rumble of an ancient motor, the door opened. There was no need to hold back and no time to hesitate. They pushed their way inside. Standing in front of them were Ace and Lotus. Ace still held the revolver in his hand. It was still pressed hard against Lotus's temple. Small dark bruises began to form near the tip. Even from several yards away, Junpei could see that Lotus was shaking. She was terrified. But perhaps more interesting was what Junpei saw behind them. Nine. Another number nine door. But why? Why was there another one? The door stopped Junpei in his tracks. Simply shouldn't have been there. As his brain finally began to consider why, the whine of a warning klaxon filled the air, drowning out any thought. Warning. Warning. Emergency Incineration Command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in... 9 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Oh my! How exciting! You've run quite a show here, Zero! A terrifying smile twisted Ace's face. What's the matter? Too frightened to understand? Here, let me explain. It's said that the incineration system is about to activate. In nine minutes, this room will be engulfed in flame. Hmm, who are you? You don't recognize me? I'm hurt. It's me, Snake. Snake? Oh yes, you are alive. I'm afraid your bizarre style had me confused. I'm quite glad to see that you're alive. Ace's voice didn't change. Snake ground his teeth. If you don't mind my asking, how did you get here? Snake, Junpei, Seven. The three of you couldn't have opened a door with a nine. Did you use Clover's bracelet, perhaps? What? Two plus five plus seven plus four equals eighteen. One plus eight equals nine. Ah, well, your reaction suggests that you did not. Hold on! Why did you think we'd have Clover's bracelet? Junpei felt his chest tighten. Oh, they haven't told you? Told me what? Hmm, clearly not. Normally I would take some time and enjoy the moment, but I'm afraid my time is at a premium just now. I'll have to make this quick. Clover... Don't do it, Ace! Keep your goddamn mouth shut! Clover. I said stop it! Don't listen to him, Snake! Junpei could feel his voice going hoarse, but Snake didn't listen to him. What happened to Clover? Ace looked at him. The corner of his mouth curled up into... curled into the hook of a cruel smile. Clover died. The color left Snake's face. He shook his head weakly. No, that's not true. That's impossible! It's a lie. It has to be a lie. Oh, it's quite true. I can assure you of that. I killed her myself, you see. What? I'm sorry, did I stutter? I killed her. Snake's face twisted into a mask of rage, mottled red rising to dot his pale skin. His entire body shook. He looked to Junpei, disturbingly like a demon. I would have rather she died with less suffering. A bullet in her brain, perhaps, would have been ideal. Unfortunately, that would have made quite a bit of noise. Circumstances being what they were, I was forced to settle for the knife. The one the ninth man had, you remember. I believe I caught her just below the shoulder blade. I was rather lucky, in fact. My first thrust went right between her ribs. Her flesh was so soft. My knife slid in so easily. There was no resistance. That feeling was... I confess, I feel rather excited. It is a powerful memory. Someday, perhaps, 
I hope I can feel it again. Incineration will begin in... Seven minutes. I'm going to kill you. Snake's words were a guttural growl, barely audible. Hmm? What was that? I'll kill you. Ah, so you're going to kill me. Please do. Come now. I'm waiting. Don't do it! Don't listen to him, Snake! Stop it, kid! He's screwing with your head! Is there a problem? What are you waiting for, boy? Don't you want me to send you to join your sister? Don't! The Snake! Don't do it! But Snake could no longer hear them. Snake could no longer hear anything. <gasps> Snake moved like a bolt of lightning. His scream echoed through the incineration chamber, full of rage and despair. Snake! Snake! <coughs> Another scream filled the room. It was Lotus. She ran across the room toward Junpei, her eyes wide with terror. Snake's ill-fated attack had loosened Ace's grip on her and she'd made a run for it. She reached Seven and Junpei and ducked behind them. Junpei could feel her fingers on his arm, tight enough to be painful, keeping him between her and Ace. Incineration will begin in... five minutes. Give me the woman! He raised his gun. I need her. Without her bracelet, I will be unable to open this door. 1 plus 8 plus 9 equals 18. 1 plus 8 equals 9. Quickly now! I don't have time for your shenanigans. In the center of the room, Snake's body lay eerily still. He looked like a human larva, prone and vulnerable on the floor. I see. Then it would seem I have no choice. The rest of you must die as well. Fortunately, I have five bullets left. One for Junpei, another for Lotus, and the last three for that lump of idiotic man you call Seven. I will take Lotus's body with me and leave this room. Incineration will begin in four minutes. Well, it looks as though our time together is at an end. I rather enjoyed playing with you. Goodbye. Junpei could see Ace's finger tighten. You could see it begin to squeeze down on the trigger. His body tensed, preparing for the catastrophic impact of hot lead against human flesh. Then it happened. Snake stood up. What? No! That's impossible! For the first time, Ace's composure broke. With obvious effort, Snake lunged forward, one step closer to Ace, then another. He looked, for all the world, like a zombie. I'll kill you! I'll kill you! His voice was mournful, was the mournful wailing of the undead. S stay away from me! Get back! Stop! If you come any closer, I'll... I'll... Get away from me! Little by little, Ace was retreating. Snake didn't stop. He continued to stiff, inexorable approach, his eyes twin pools of fe pure fury. Listen to me! I said don't come any closer! Shit! You bastard! Ace's revolver leapt five times. Five times, the air in the incinerator was split by the crack of a bullet. Snake's body twitched as five clouds of blood and torn flesh leapt into the air across his body. A fine pink mist drifted from his body and disappeared. Snake made a strange sort of choking cough. And then his strength was gone. His legs crumbled and his broken and battered body slid to the floor. Incineration will begin in... Three minutes. But Snake wasn't done. Even as the pool of blood beneath him grew, he began to move. He half crawled, half slid toward Ace. One bloody arm wrapped itself around Ace's leg, and the other gripped his, his thigh with strength that should have been long gone. 
You... You son of a bitch! You... You're a monster! Get off me! Let me go, damn you! He kicked at Snake with his free leg, driving his foot into Snake's face, his arm, his shoulder. It made no difference. Snake refused to release him. Once a snake has ensnared its prey, rarely does it release it. Ugh. This is it, Ace. We're going to burn to death together. What? Incineration will begin in two minutes. Yeah. Damn it. Damn you. Get off. Let me go, you monster. Okay, 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 look. Think about it this way. My company owns a wonderful hospital. It has excellent doctors. You're, you're not wounded too seriously. I, I'm sure they can fix you up easily. You don't have to die. You could be saved. Just let me go. <laughs> Pathetic. Begging for your <coughs> life. Then Seven and Lotus began to speak. Jumpa could hear tears in their voices and their words were strained. Snake, that's enough! You can stop now! Yes! He's right, Snake! You've done enough! Come on, Snake, let's go! Let's get out of here! You have to come with us! We have to leave together! Snake turned toward them. He coughed, and blood splattered across the floor. Then he smiled with a sad sort of smile. I apologize, but I'm afraid I can't... Do that. You'd best forget about me. You need to leave soon. I'm going to take him with me. Shut up! Be quiet! I couldn't save Clover. My sister died because of me. Perhaps this will begin to atone for that. Perhaps, in the afterlife, she can forgive me. Now go! Go now! You have to... <laughs> go! Incineration will begin in... One minute. God damn it! Shit! We're out of time! We gotta go! Seven ran toward the exit. Lotus followed him, but Junpei, Junpei couldn't move. There were white lines down Snake's cheeks where his tears had washed the blood away. He was broken, body and soul, and Junpei felt as though half of his own heart had been torn out. His eyes stung, and he tried desperately to swallow to clear the lump in his throat. Junpei, what are you doing? You have to get out of here now! Junpei's chest tightened, pulled taunt by anger, misery, and a cold feeling of emptiness. Pure emotion surged through his heart, alongside it the torrent of blood. He could feel it building, a tremendous wave growing taller and taller and taller. And it broke, crashing down with thunderous force onto his shaken, unprepared mind. SNAKE! SNAKE! Junpei's rational mind was gone. He was driven by instinct now, and he launched himself across the floor at Snake and Ace. Or he tried to. WAIT! DON'T BE AN IDIOT, JUNPEI! He felt his hand grab him from behind. It was Seven. Before he had time to react, react the large man had pinned Junpei's arm to his sides and was hauling him bodily back toward the door. NO! NO! I HAVE TO HELP SNAKE! 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 GET OFF OF ME! LET ME GO! Incineration will begin in 10 seconds. Seven. Six. Damn it, I don't get a choice, kid! Don't blame me for this, alright? Five, four, three, two. 
one, zero. Gates two and three are locked down. Beginning incineration. Junpei felt Seven's fist bury itself deep in his stomach, and then his legs turned to mush. Seven scooped him up in the same motion and leapt through the door. It slammed shut behind them. Junpei struggled to shaky feet. He glanced over to see Lotus only a short distance away. Junpei ran to the door. There was a small window cut into it. Inside, he could see Ace and... Snake. Shit! Damn you all! Why? Why? Why me? I don't deserve this! Answer me! Answer me, Zero! Why? Why? Zero! 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 He didn't know how much time passed. He didn't know how long he stood there in front of the incinerator. He looked to the side. Lotus's face was ashen, and if not for the hand she'd put against the wall, Jinpei didn't think she could have stood. Seven looked old and tired and used. His eyes stared at the floor, seeing nothing. Junpei said nothing. He simply began to walk toward the open door in the hallway they'd come down earlier. Hey, wait! Junpei! Junpei! Where are you going? He blinked when their voices broke the silence. He stopped. You stay here. I'll go get Santa and June. You're gonna bring them here? How? Don't worry about that. Just stay here and wait, alright? He began to walk again. He looked over his shoulder and watched Seven and Lotus grow smaller and smaller. They stared back, not moving. He wasn't sure if they could. He turned around again. He knew where he was going. When they'd walked through the hallway earlier, he'd noticed an elevator at the end of the side hallway. If it still worked, then maybe. Before long, Junpei found himself in front of the elevator. Next the, to the door was a button with a triangle on it. He pushed it, and the door opened. Junpei was in the large hospital room. June! Santa! He kept calling and walked to the center of the room. But try as he might, he couldn't find them. <sighs> Damn it! Where did they go? Increasingly frustrated and increasingly worried, Junpei left the large hospital room. He had no choice. He would have to look for them. Junpei's heart was heavy. He couldn't shake the feeling, but there was a part of him that felt it would be wrong to, even if he could. With every step he took, his legs felt more and more like lead. Sometime later, 
Junpei found himself at the chapel. He stepped inside, expecting to find nothing. But there, on the red carpet in the center of the room... June. No. Code names didn't matter any longer. She was Connie. Connie! Junpei cried her name and ran. Like lightning, he ran across the room toward her. Connie! He stumbled to a stop. As he looked down at her body, lying so still on the floor, he felt the icy grip of fear upon his heart. She was still... so very still. No. No, it couldn't be. It was impossible. Slowly, Junpei bent down toward her. His hands shook, and he felt very cold and very hot at the same time. He forced himself to look. Her back... Her back was moving. Slowly, it rose and fell. Relief washed over him. Oh, Connie! Junpei reached down and gently, very gently lifted her up. Connie! Connie, are you alright? Jumpy? Her face was pale, and her lips were dry and cracked. Her eyes were blank and cloudy. They stared straight at Junpei but saw nothing. Trembling, Junpei wrapped his arms around her back. She was cold. Very cold. Junpei tried to convince himself that it was only his imagination, but she felt as though she were fading away. He could feel her heart pounding frantically in his chest. Oh man, Connie, what the hell happened to you? You, you feel... Junpei, I'm sorry. Her voice was very faint. I, I might not make it. No, no way, no way, I am going to let you die. I am going to save you, I promise. Thank you, Jumpy. Thank you so much oh, for everything. I was really happy to see you again, Jumpy. Really happy. Oh, don't give me that I was crap. You're going to see me again lots more times. You've... You just gotta hang on, all right, Connie? Chumpy, did you know you meant a lot to me when we were kids? I've liked you for a long time, Junpei. A really long time. Junpei's vision had gone blurry. It took him a moment to realize his eyes were filled with tears. He could feel a piercing point of heat deep in his heart, like a white-hot flame. He looked down at Akane. <laughs> there was a crack of static from above his head, and a voice spoke. Zero. You son of a bitch! Where are you hiding?! Junpei frantically scanned the ceiling for the source of the voice. What the hell are you talking about? No. No, it hasn't. I'm not gonna let it end yet. I'm gonna get out of here with Connie. You killed God is impossible. Why? Because I chose the wrong path. The wrong path? That is correct. Your path is a miracle, Hana. It makes it defeat. And the only shadow there is light. Where there is the absence of light, there is no shadow. So it goes. What are you talking about? That is not. I told you! I am not gonna lose! No, you misunderstand. You have lost. I have lost. What? Junpei didn't have time to ponder what that meant before. He heard a door slam shut behind him. He spun around. There was no one there. Was it 
Zero. Connie, wait here. I'll be right back, I promise. She managed a single nod. Junpei laid her back down gently and leapt for the door. He yanked it open and shot outside. No one. The hallway was empty. There was nothing moving anywhere. Damn it. He didn't want to leave Connie alone any longer than he had to, so Junpei turned around and headed back to the chapel. Connie! She wasn't there. She wasn't anywhere. She'd been lying there on the floor just moments before. And now she was gone. Oh god! No! No! Where is she? Connie! 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 His cry split the heavens themselves. He screamed until his voice gave out. And then he screamed some more. But there was nothing. No answer. His voice faded away, and all that remained was cold, unfeeling silence. That was when he noticed it. A strange smell. One he'd smelled before. The smell of a peculiar, white smoke. Nine seconds later, Junpei's mind winked out. <laughs>